Editing audio. Traction's clip editing features are entirely non-destructive. Audio clips are merely references to the original files, so you can trim their lengths, chop them into smaller pieces, apply fades, etc., without affecting the actual audio file that's stored on your hard drive at all. For example, if I drag an audio file from the browser, it will appear in the edit as a clip. If it is selected, or if the mouse cursor is above it, we see an extra bar appear at the top of the clip with various triangle and square symbols. If you hover the mouse cursor over a part of this bar with no symbols, it will change into a hand, indicating that you can pick up the clip and move it around the edit. If you press and hold the control key before dragging, you will create a copy of the clip. This does not create a duplicate of the actual audio file, it just creates another reference to it. The clear triangle symbol in the top left corner allows the start point of the clip to be trimmed. Because this is non-destructive, anything you have trimmed out in this way can be restored if needed by simply dragging the clear triangle back again to reveal more of the original audio. Audible trimming in the options menu will continually play a short section of the audio as you trim it. Similarly, the clear triangle in the top right corner allows the end point to be trimmed, while the clear square will move both start and end points together as if the clip were a window into the original file. In other words, the clear shapes allow you to adjust the start and end points of the clip without moving the actual audio at all. The solid shapes, on the other hand, all result in the audio itself moving. The solid triangles in the corners move the audio along with the clip boundaries, while the solid square moves the audio inside the clip without changing the clip length or position. Holding the ALT key while dragging the start or end point of a clip will stretch that clip accordingly. By default, this will simply play the audio at a different speed, so stretching a clip out longer will also drop its playback pitch and vice versa. You can also set a clip's playback speed using the speed slider in the properties panel or the change speed button. This button also has an option to reset the clip back to normal. Traction also offers a choice of two time-stretching algorithms, however, which will allow you to change the playback speed of the audio without affecting its pitch. Be aware that, although the time-stretch algorithm in Traction 3 is vastly better than that in previous versions of Traction, it will still degrade the audio quality to some extent, so if you have the option to re-record the part at the correct speed, that might be a better idea. Of course, you can also do the opposite and use the pitch slider or the change pitch button to change the playback pitch of the audio without changing its length. The pitch shift has the same quality implications as the time stretch, so again, you may want to consider re-recording at the correct pitch instead. All the clip editing functions are affected by the snapping option, so you will need to toggle this on by pressing Q if you are trimming a clip to an exact number of bars or beats, but turn it off if you wish to make small timing adjustments. A clip can also be split into multiple clips via the split clips button, or by positioning the cursor at the appropriate point and pressing the forward slash key. Notice that we now have two clips each with their own separate trim functions, so both these clips can be stretched out to reveal as much as you need of the audio file they refer to, just as if you had copied the original clip. If you have a stacked clip containing several takes that were recorded in loop mode, splitting it into separate clips like this will allow you to choose a separate take for each section, so you can comp together the best bits of each take. Selecting a clip or clips and pressing delete will delete the clips from the edit, but still does not affect the original audio file. 
If we switch to the project page, we can see that the imported file is still listed in the imported audio folder of the project and it can be copied to the clipboard so you can paste it back into the edit. If you wish to permanently delete an audio file, you can do so from the right click menu or by holding Ctrl and pressing M. Traction will pop up a warning when you do this. Each audio clip can have a fade in or fade out applied, again non-destructively, using the dedicated handles at the start and end. Dragging these handles will create linear fades as indicated by the graphic display. Non-linear fades can be selected via the buttons in the Clips Properties panel. If two audio clips overlap, pressing the Auto Crossfade button, or the X key, will set these automatically, though you are still free to make manual changes to the results. Each audio clip also has its own gain and pan parameters in the clip properties, and stereo clips can be treated as mono by turning off one or other of the channels. Filters can be applied to individual audio clips, either by dragging them from the filter area or from the new filter icon. These filters are automatically turned off when the clip is not playing, which can help to conserve your processor cycles in complex mixes, and also provides a quick and easy way to apply an effect to a short section of a track, such as a single line or word of a vocal part. Simply split the clip around the desired section and drag as many filters to the new clip as required. Clips can be designated as loops by toggling on the little L symbol to the right of the slip editing squares. This can be used to create a looping backing part such as a drum beat. First you need to make sure the clip is trimmed to exactly the right length. This can be done in various ways. Here I have a recording of a drummer playing a beat with no click track. If I zoom in tight and turn off snapping, I can position the cursor at the start of a kick drum beat and then press the I key to move the in marker. I can then repeat the procedure with the kick drum at the next downbeat but this time press O to set the out marker. If I then press the L key to set traction to loop playback around the markers, I can fine tune the loop if necessary, and then use the split clips at mark in and out options from the clip properties when I'm happy. Alternatively, I could split the clip roughly on the fly using the forward slash key and then make fine adjustments later by slip editing with the clear triangles. Pressing M will move the markers around the selected clip to allow you to audition the loop. Once the clip is perfectly trimmed, or the markers are accurately positioned, Traction will be able to work out the loop's tempo for you using the Auto Tempo function in the clip properties. If there are any tempo changes in the edit, the tempo will be applied to the last one prior to the clip start. Of course, if you already know the tempo, you can just click the BPM display and type it in. We can now turn snapping back on, drag the clip to the start of a bar or the start of the edit, and if we turn on the click it should be in time. Pressing the L symbol will turn on looping mode for the clip, so you can now stretch the clip out to repeat the loop for as long as you need using the clear triangle symbol in the top right corner. Looped clips can be split just like normal clips, and the result will be two looped clips, which can both be slip edited in the usual ways, 
and have their loop lengths adjusted by dragging any of the dividing lines between iterations. Looping can be turned off again using the same button. This feature can also be used to create machine gun snare rolls. or for interesting glitchy effects with very short loops. These standard editing functions allow manual beat slicing to be achieved. Zoom in tight, position the cursor at the start of each transient and slice the loop into separate beats. Now select all of the clips by holding ALT while drawing a box around them and check that the Remap on Tempo Change option is turned on. Changing the edit tempo will now shift the timing of all the clips to keep the beat in time with the metronome. If you speed up the tempo enough to make overlaps a problem, select all the clips again and slip edit all the endpoints together. You can then make individual adjustments to segments or apply fades as needed. Clip colors can be changed freely in the properties panel. In this case I have chosen to color kick drums blue and snare drums red, but they can be used to indicate good takes or to differentiate between chorus and verse, or any other method that makes sense to you. The View Source Info button will bring up parameters relating to the actual audio file rather than just the clip. From here we can rename the source file or open its directory, and we can preview the file in the window. The Edit Audio File button provides an option to create an actual copy of the original file which might be a wise decision if you then move on to the basic editing operations, which are the only destructive audio editing functions in Traction. If you need more detailed destructive editing, you can define a suitable external editor via the Set the Audio Editor to Use option. It will then appear in the same Edit Audio File list and also in the right-click menu for audio clips. If you edit a file in an external application and then press save, Traction will update its display accordingly. Once you have edited your clips, you may wish to link them together to treat them as a single object. This can't be done non-destructively, but you can create a new audio file of your edited clips by selecting the track and using the render functions in the properties panel. Render to a specific file allows you to specify exactly the file name and path used, while Render into Project Directory will automatically name the file and save it in the current project directory. Both options allow you to specify the bit depth used and to choose whether the resulting track will be added to the edit alongside the original or whether the new track replaces the original. You can also opt to render only the region between the markers or to ignore any filters on the tracks. This is destructive in the sense that you will no longer be able to adjust the individual segments, but it is still non-destructive in the sense that the original audio file we started with remains intact. We can verify this by switching back to the project page. The original file is still there and can be previewed in the bottom panel, but we now also have a newly rendered file containing our edited version. Alternatively, 
you could put the track inside a folder, which will then display an overview clip to represent all the clips contained in that folder. The overview clip can be dragged, copied and pasted in the same way as individual clips. If you hold the ALT key, you can stretch all the clips together as if they were one. If there are gaps between the audio clips, then they will appear as separate overview clips. If this is a problem, you can add a blank track to the folder and insert a dummy MIDI clip to glue the overview clips together. <laughs> 